Hi, how's it going? Welcome back. In the previous video, we went ahead and queried our physical device and got that. Now, I think of a physical device as like a read-only sort of thing because I very well can't go in and change my capabilities. But if we have our read-only device where we can just read out what our device can do, that doesn't really enable us to do things with it. So Vulcan also has the concept of a logical device, which is really just called a device. And that is an abstraction layer around our physical device. So what we'll be doing in this video is using info from our physical device to create an abstraction called a logical device. Before I go into the, the guts of the code, really what we're going to do today is the following. So we've got in our device header file all of these functions here, and the ones which we're going to need to implement uh, this bottom one, find Q family index, and down right, right down the bottom, um, create logical device. So that's what we're going to be implementing. But before I get right into that, I'm just going to run through a little adjustment that I made to the renderer. Now, as I've mentioned in the past, these adjustments are going to be made. Sometimes they're just not interesting enough to do on the fly. But what I've got is some resources are managed by an instance. So we take in an instance and we say, hey, instance, destroy this thing. And then on the other hand, some resources are managed by a device, a logical device, where we say, hey, logical device, destroy this thing. For that reason, I've now split my deleter queue into two individual queues, and I've set it up um, to reflect that change across the other source files. But that will be useful um, later on. So if we go to our renderer source file, when we go to clean things up, as you can see here, we're going to go through and run the deletion queue for giving it, you know, the logical device. It goes ahead and calls logical device, delete this stuff, basically, and similar, for instance. Now, as I mentioned, one thing we're going to need to do is find a queue family index. Now, there's a little bit to unpack here, right? Because we say, OK, what's a queue family index? It's an index of a Q family. What's a Q family? It's a family of Qs. So to bring it right back, we can do work on our GPU. And when we do work on our GPU, we describe a job which needs to be done. And then we submit that description. We submit that job on a Q. And a Q is an abstract object which can then go ahead and get the GPU to actually do the work. Some examples of jobs are memory transfers. If we want to like blit, you know, an image from one texture to another, any graphic stuff, any compute stuff and memory, uh, you know, heaps of things, but also memory transfers that don't necessarily involve image memory. So like buffer transitions and vertex buffers, things like that. Anyway, any work that the GPU does, that is submitted on a queue. And it just so turns out that when we create a logical device, at that point, we need to request one or more queues. And in order to do that, we'll need the queue family index, right? So a queue is a thing which does work. A queue family is an abstract collection of those things. So we could have one queue family, which does a whole bunch of different things. And then, the Q family index is the, it's an integer, it's an index of that specific Q family. So I know I've been talking in circles. Let's have a look at how this Q family index thing works. So we'll go over to our source file, just right down the bottom. We'll just keep that for later. A 
Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm querying the physical device to get the properties of its Q families. Now, this will give me, well, I can initialize, using this info, I can then initialize a vector of Q family properties where each element or the position of each element in the vector is the Q family index. And then the properties, well, that thing has a bunch of, like, let's say, go Q families, just grab one of them. And we have got, yeah, a bunch of properties. So Q count is the number of Qs supported within that Q family. And Q flags is the operations which the queues in that queue family can undertake the functionality that we have. And it's this queue flags, which I'm really interested in. So when I look over here, I see I'm requesting a certain queue type, graphics, compute, stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'll look through every element. There we go. I'm looking through every element one at a time. I'm checking the Q flags against that Q type. This Q flags is a bit mask. So we can support multiple functionality for each Q. And that will be done by setting individual bits. And we can test to see if an individual bit is defined with the bitwise and operator. Cool. So. We pretty much return the first suitable one which we find and upon total failure we just return a sentinel value to indicate that we went through everything we couldn't find it cool so with that done let's now have a look at find or oh sorry create logical device So just as so just just, uh, uh, just so you can see, some options we can have here for these Q types are compute, graphics, uh, protected memory, sparse binding, transfer, all these things. But in this case, I just want to query the graphics Q. Cool. So in order to create a queue, we will need to pass in a few things. We've got this create queue info. We'll need to set some flags. I'll need to pass in the queue index, queue family index that I want to use. Or I should say, right, I'm creating a queue, so I'll need to pass in the index of the family which I want to create that queue within. The next thing I'm going to need is the number of queues, which I'm going to be, yeah, the number of queues, which I'm going to be requesting, and then a pointer to the array of queue priorities. So this is in the indent. In the instance that we want to create multiple queues, we could have a whole bunch of priorities associated with each queue, in which case this would be a proper pointer right now. It's just a, you know, just a float. But there we have it. Okay, so what I've done here is when I come to create the logical device, I may need to request a bunch of features. In this case, I am not going to request any special features. I'll just leave it at the default. But I will still need to create an empty struct. Um, in order to pass that in for the creation function. So at this point, we've gone through, we've got the info needed to create a queue. We've got the features which we're requesting. The next thing I'm going to need is layers because I'm going to need uh, validation.
So pretty similar to validation layers at instance creation, that also needs to be done at device creation. Because the instance and device both manage resources, they can both, well, it just turns out it needs to be done on both of them. So now we can go ahead and create the device. Okay, so here's the device create info. We take a few things, as with everything else, we take a bunch of flags. We then have the info for the queue or queues, which we wish, wish to create. We then have info for the layers, which we wish to enable. Then we have info for extensions, currently no extensions. And then we also have the features, which we want to create or request in our logical device. We can then go ahead and create the device. With that device created, we can then check if the device was successfully created. And if it was, then we'll also pack in the deletion function onto the deletion queue for the device. Um, otherwise, what else can we say? We failed. So I'll step through this again, because there's a few, a few bits. Um, first of all, again, we describe the queue, which we want to create for our device to use, to do work. We describe the features, which we want our device to have enabled. We then go ahead and possibly enable validation layers as well. And then we wrap all that up in the device creation info. Then we use that device creation info to create a device. We query the result of that operation. If it was successful, then we're all good. And we return the underlying object. And yeah, okay. So I'll just step back again through how this is being used. So what we're doing here is upon creation, we go through of our engine, we go through everything that we've done so far. We, yeah create our instance, choose our physical device, all of that. Then we come here, we create our logical device, and then we use the logical device, uh, use physical device, sorry, to query the graphics queue family index again. And then we fetch that queue from the logical device. So creating the logical device also creates the queue for us to work with. We can then use that index to, well, because we've only created one queue on this queue family, we'll get queue zero, the first one within that queue family. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so what I'll do is go ahead and run this. Okay, so as you can see, we have created it, nothing massive, but we are getting this message down here. Um, so this is interesting. It says here validation layer object something, handle something type, physical device. Let me try to find it. So it's saying this is occurring upon Vulcan create device. And it says here, uh, the Vulcan Kronos portability subset must be enabled because physical device supports it. So basically, if you are using this on Linux or Windows, you probably won't get this issue. This is just because I'm running it on Mac. And as you can see, we've deleted the logical device with no problem. So 
what this validation layer has done is it's jumped in in between and said, hey, you're creating a logical device. You haven't set this flag. I'm going to go, oh, sorry, you haven't enabled this extension. I'm going to go ahead and enable it for you. So let me just quickly fix that. So this is happening in find Q family index. Sorry, no, uh, create logical device. And so up here, I've got my layers. Now I'm going to have my extension. There we go. So again, this is just a Mac issue. This is just because I am emulating Vulkan, basically. But um, anyway, so again, we've got our layers up here. Now we'll put in our extensions. So I've enabled extension count and then just like that. So we can go ahead and run this. And uh, yeah, we're getting it. Now we've got that window up with no errors. We can go ahead, close the window, and everything gets deleted in the correct order. Cool. Okay. Now, just one other thing is it may be interesting to look at our queues. So, let me, let me sort of get this out of the way. So, back when we were inspecting the queue families, I'm pretty sure I set this up. Yeah, I can go ahead and log that out. So this is another function which I created in the background. I'll jump in and have a look at how it works. So if we go to, here we go. Okay. So we have this function which takes in a vector of Q family properties and we can look at a few things. We can look at how many Q families we have and then we can look through each like Q family one by one. And the thing I'm really interested in is it's Q flags. So you can see I'm sort of popping out all of these things for all the capabilities. So I can go ahead and run this. And now I'll pop back up to the top. So on my device, I've got four Q families available. Q family zero um, supports compute, graphics, and transfer, and has one Q, can have one Q. And it's pretty much the same for all of these. These all seem to have similar capabilities in terms of what they support. But anyway, I think that's interesting. So look, that will be it for today. Hope you had fun. And as always, all the best. I'll see you again soon. Bye.